Hi guys, in this video we're going to be showing you how you can create a path that follows the curvature of your environments. The example given in this video is a road going over a hill. So this is the environment that I am using for this demonstration. It's just a plane that has been scaled up subdivided and then with the help of proportional editing in edit mode just brought up to create a hill but you can use any environment that you want to use now what i'm going to do is i am going to just hide my ground object for now by coming over to the outliner panel and left clicking where it says hide in viewport then i'm going to zoom into the center of the world origin hit shift a add mesh and then select plane i have the size set to four meters by default it's normally set to two but i've got it set to four i'm going to rename the plane in the outliner panel as road then i'm going to hit shift a in the viewport add curve and select path i'm going to rename my path as road path then i want to parent the road to the road path so select the road then in the outliner panel hold down control and left click to select the road path bring your mouse back to the 3d viewport hit control and p to open up the parent menu and you do see multiple options here, but the option that we want to use is going to be object. Now, if we take a look in the outliner panel, we only see the road path, but if we open up the hierarchy, we can see the road object underneath. So select the road path itself and hit the G key to confirm that you are able to move both the path and the road object. Hit the right mouse button to cancel that operation. Very quickly, let's just go file and save our current project. And I'm just going to save mine as road and hill and save my Blender file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring our ground plane back into view. We're going to zoom out a bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our path object, move it on the x-axis to about here. Now, what we also want to do is we also want to make sure that the path is going to be going in the correct direction. So I'm going to hit the period key on my number pad to zoom in on the active selection, which is the road path and then hit the tab key to go into edit mode. Now the arrows that you can see are demonstrating the direction of the path. That means that I've actually positioned this on the incorrect side because if I add an array modifier to the road, the array is going to be going in that direction, which is the complete opposite direction that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back into object mode and with the road path still selected i'm going to hit the g key lock it to the x-axis and move it over to about here next i want to create a couple of modifiers for the road object so that it's going to follow along the direction of the path itself so select the road object in the outliner panel then go to the modifiers tab add modifier and select array now as we increase the array you can see that the path or road goes from one end of our ground plane to the other but at the moment it's also going straight through but we'll get back to that in a moment for now set the count back down to one add modifier and select curve then under object select road path you should see something like this 
Next, we need to test to make sure this is working properly. So left click on the road path, hit the tab key to go into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into a top orthographic view. Zoom in on my path object by pressing the period key on my number pad. Zoom out a little bit. Select the end point here and hit E to extrude. And I'm just going to create a very wacky shape to start with. Just to confirm that the path is working correctly. So now I'm going to come back into object mode, select our road object and increase the count. And you can see here that our road is able to follow the curvature of the path. So we know how to do that, but now we need to have the path follow the curvature of the geometry for our ground plane. So I'm going to set the count value back to one and actually for this I'm just going to hit Control and Z multiple times until I am able to get back to this point. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to begin extruding geometry in a straight line. However, I want it to follow the curvature of the hill. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to enable snapping. Come up here to the magnet icon and left click where it says snap to enable the snapping tool. Make sure that you are snapped to the face of the object. You can choose some of the other options, but I find face snapping works best for this. Then go back into top orthographic view, zoom in a bit and hit E to extrude to create a new vertex and lock it to the Y plane. By locking it to the Y plane, we are able to move it on both the X and Z axes. So hit Shift and Y to lock it to the Y plane and position. Then left click to confirm. Now, one thing that's quite important here is the positioning of your cursor as you extrude. The extruded vertices are going to snap to the face that your mouse cursor is hovering over. So if you want to do this cleanly without much fuss, make sure that the mouse cursor is as close to the extruded geometry as possible. So hit E, then Shift Y, position and left click. Pan our view and then hit E, Shift Y, position, left click. And I'm just going to do that multiple times until I reach the positioning of the 3D cursor. Okay, so we've created points all the way up to the center of our 3D cursor. If we orbit our view now, we should be able to see that the curvature of the path is following the curvature of the hill. If we test this with our road object by going into object mode, selecting the road and then increasing the count, we can see that the road is following the curvature of the ground. So now that we know this works, we're going to set the count back to one and complete the path. You will notice that I am constantly setting the array count to one. The reason why is because we're using the snapping tool, we don't want it to snap to the geometry of the road at any point. That's going to create issues. We always want it to snap to the ground geometry instead. So I'm going to select the road path, go back into edit mode, go back to my bird's eye view, and then we're going to create the remaining points over the other side of the hill. So 
So now that we've created all of our points, if we orbit our view, we should be able to see something like this, where the path follows the geometry and the curvature of the hill. And if we were to go into object mode, select our road and increase the count, we would be able to see that the road goes up and over the hill. However, you will also notice that there are a couple of issues that still need to be solved at the ends and also towards the top of the hill. Now that we have created the path and positioned all of its points, we can take the entire path and just lift it up slightly. So we're going to select the road path again, hit G, and you will notice that I still have snapping enabled. So this is where it can become a nuisance rather than being a valuable tool. So we're going to turn it off, hit G, lock it to the Z axis and use a very, very small value, say 0 0.01 and press enter. Now this will fix the issue at the ends if we were to go into our material preview we would be able to see the road on either end of the hill but there's still some overlapping in the center now there are two things that we can do to fix this the first method is to select the geometry of the road go into edit mode and add some geometry to our plane. So right click, subdivide and increase the number of cuts. So I'm going to go to five, hit the tab key to go back into object mode. And you can see that it's looking better, but it's still not perfect yet. So the last thing we need to do is give the road itself a little bit of thickness. Hit tab one more time to go into edit mode. Hit E to extrude. And then again, using a very small value, so 0 0.02, press enter, go into object mode, and that will fix the overlapping issue that we have at the top of the hill. So now we've been able to create a road that is capable of going up and over our hill. The last thing we're going to do now is just give our road a suitable material. So go to the materials tab, click new, name it as road, and you'll see it's named as road.002 here for me, and that's because I've already created this material several times in this project but I'm going to set the base color to a nice dark gray with a little bit of added roughness. And that's how we can create paths that follow along the curvature of our environments. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. If you are interested in learning more about Blender, then feel free to subscribe to our bi-weekly newsletter which gives you updates on all things Blender, including future releases of Blender, tips and tricks on how to use some of your favorite tools, recommendations for things like tutorials, courses, as well as things like add-ons or websites that can improve your Blender experience. So thanks guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.